One of the reasons that I wrote The Rainbow Player was to try to get more people talking about the fact that we had no openly gay footballers in Britain. And I think one of the reasons for that is that we hold footballers up as icons, which is completely understandable, really. You know, you, you run out onto a pitch in front of 50,000 people every week, you play in front of a worldwide audience of, of millions, and you're almost a demigod in a way. Um, and what we forget is that there's a human being behind the demigod with the same strengths and weaknesses and foibles as, as anybody else. And what I try to do with the Rainbow Player is write about this, this lovely young guy, Sammy Hatchington, who comes up from humble origins um, and becomes a famous premiership player. Um, and he has the same weaknesses as anybody else. You know, he can't tie his shoelaces until he's seven years old. He, he does the same thing that I do on a regular basis, walk into a clothes shop, walk smack into a mannequin, knock it flying, pick it up again, redress it and still apologise to it. You know, he's a, a real person in the real world. And in the real world, it's uh, supposed to be one in 10 guys who are gay or bisexual. So you look at a first team, of a football team, and you've got 11 players, there's a good chance that one is going to be gay or bisexual, uh, let alone in the entire squad. Another thing with football is it's so traditional, nothing really changes. You know, um, goal line technology is just coming in now and, and almost reluctantly so anyway, whereas we've had it for years in, in cricket, in rugby, in tennis, and fans stand the same places in, in the grounds that their, their parents stood in, their grandparents, their great-grandparents, sing the same songs, chant the same chants. Nothing has really changed over the decades. And, and you go back prior to 1967, and being gay was a criminal offence for some ridiculous reason. Um, so nothing has changed there either. And also there's the fear factor. You know, if, if you're a football player and you call a press conference and you say, yeah, I'm gay. And then 24 hours later, you go out onto a pitch and you play in front of 50,000 people. Are you going to get homophobic abuse from 50,000 people? Because, you know, nobody could do that week in, week out. And I think the answer to that question is no, you're not going to get homophobic abuse. You will do from the small minority because in this subject, as with any subject, it's always the 5% of the radical extremes who shout the loudest, usually because they're covering a massive hole in their own argument. But if the 90% of us fair-minded people in the middle actually shouted for once, we'd have a far more tolerant society. Um, it's labels, isn't it? As soon as you label somebody, uh, it's an excuse to, to willfully misunderstand them or, or to hate them. We need to not label players. It doesn't matter who you wake up with in the morning, who you hold hands with. It's what you do on the pitch that matters, not anything else. Thomas Hitzelsberger, who played for Aston Villa and, and, and several other teams, um, he came out after he retired. And one of the arguments that was always put forth was, if you're a gay player, you couldn't kick the ball very hard. I mean, what, what a ridiculous stereotype that is. I mean, Thomas had one of the most powerful free kicks in the game for a start. Um, and we need to dispel this, this ludicrous stereotype. I mean, Alexander the Great, the world's greatest soldier was gay. The Emperor Hadrian conquered a few provinces, built a rather large wall, he was gay. The Greek armies, the Athenians and the Spartans, they actually encouraged their soldiers to fall in love with each other. Because if you're in love with a fellow soldier, you would fight better for them. Um, we've eradicated racism from football in this country pretty much and, and around the world to a large extent as well. It doesn't matter if you're black or white or Asian, what you are, you're part of a team and it's how you play on the pitch that matters. In fact, if you took football uh, as a microcosm of the world and you expanded into the, the whole world, you'd have probably no racism because it doesn't matter anymore what colour you are in football. And if we can to, to take this into sexuality as well, it will be amazing. Um, I was interviewed on, on BBC Radio on the Sports Hour programme uh, a while back with Anton Husen, who plays in Sweden. And he came out about seven years ago. And um, he said, when I came out, I thought that other footballers might follow. And no one did. Uh, Robbie Rogers did about four years ago, uh, American player. And he went back to America because he said he couldn't be a footballer and gay in this country which is a really, really sorry state of affairs. Anton, brilliant player, lovely guy, comes out. You would think 
that having set that precedent, other players might, but no one has done. What I hope with the rainbow player is if it helps by just half a percentage point to get to a situation where um, gay players can be absolutely open about their sexuality, then it was worth writing it. If the 90% of us fair-minded people actually shouted for once, then we could, we could change the situation tomorrow. Love doesn't have any subdivisions. Love is, is greater than any label you can put on it. Love is love.